Okay, welcome to my Routing and Switching Essentials Lab Review. We're doing Lab 6224, Configuring IPv4 Static and Default Routes. I already have Packet Tracer open with my lab document, and we're going to start just going through it. Alright, so part one, let's look at our topology. Let's go ahead and look over. Let's look at the directly connected networks. So for Router 1, we know this is a network. This is a network for Router 2. We know those three are networks and for router three, those three are the directed connected networks. So let's go ahead and let's get into it. So I'm looking at part D, let's test connectivity. So I'm going to be looking at pinging. So from PC2, I'm going to see if I can ping PC1. 31.1.126. No. Can I ping my default gateway of my network? 172.31.0.1. Sure. Can I ping one of these interfaces? Ping 172.31.1.193. I can ping 193. Can I ping 194? Why why can't I ping 194? So I can ping this interface. I can ping this interface. I cannot ping this interface. So that means there is no routing or the exchanging of networks set up right now. So router two knows just about these three networks. For this network, it only knows this guy right here and this guy right here. It knows about this guy right here because it understands that part of the network. So why could it not re uh, receive its reply? That's because router one with a source IP address from PC one did not know where to send it. So it could not return. So router two does know about these networks. Ah, I'll just use snippet. So router two knows about those guys. But when a IP source comes in that the router doesn't know about, for example, R1, R1 does not know about these networks. R1 knows about these networks. So when a reply IP or a source IP comes from that network, Router 1 doesn't know how to process it or where to send it, so it doesn't know what to do. So that is what explains D. That no routing setup, so it doesn't know how to exchange the routes. So what is a recursive route? A recursive route specifically is a route whose next hop and the destination network are covered by another learned route in the routing table. Typically, static routes cannot be installed in the routing table because they are considered redundant routes. It requires two entries, one in the source, one in the destination. So let's go ahead and configure a recursive route to every network that's not directly connected to R1. Uh, clarification for part B for step one. It must first look in the routing table for the destination network and then look up the exit interface slash direction for the network for the next hop. That's why there's two entries. So let's go ahead and hop on R1. We're doing everything from the CLI. Get logged in. Get to our configuration mode. So we're going to be setting up three static routes. So IP route. 
The first one should be 172.31.0.0.0. That's this guy up here with its subnet mask. We're going to be sending this guy. We're going to do the next hop's IP address. We could also do the interface, but we're going to be sending this to 31.1.193. That's this interface right here. So that means router one, when the destination is this network, send to this interface. The next network will be this network right here in between, router two and router three. IP route 132.31.1.196. It's a slash 30. We're be again sending everything to router to the IP address. And lastly, we'll be sending this network. So anything destined for this network on R1 will be sent to this interface. We're going to have a lot more routes in R2 just because, again, we're going to send everything out to R2. So this is typically where I get asked, well, can't we just do a any? We can just do 0, .0, .0, 0.0.0.0 space any subnet, send all of that to router 2, which we could, but this way we end up with a lot more control. This is a slash 26. And again, we're sending everything to router 2. So now we should be able to communicate between R2 and R1. Let's try. And it does work. Let's try ping in the PC. It again, it does work. Because R1 knows how to reach this network now. R1 also knows how to reach this network and this network. But if we went to ping these other networks, they should start failing because R1 knows the routes, but R2 doesn't and R3 still doesn't. So R2 only still knows about these three networks. R3 still only knows about these two networks. R1 knows about all of them. So we've done step one. We've done this one. Now we've done D. Let's move on to step two. I'm just going to scroll all the way down. How does a directly attached static route differ from a recursive static route? A direct attached static route relies on its exit interface in order for packets to be sent to its destination, while a recursive static route uses the IP address of the next hop. So, directly attached static routes rely on exit or the egress interface. Recursive requires the IP address of the next hop. All right, to B, we're going to be configuring static routes on this one. Get to its configuration mode. Config T. We're going to be adding in two IP routes for this network and for this network. So IP route. We'll do the uh, LAN side of R1 first, 172.31.1.0, with a slash 25 as its IP address. But this one, we're going to be sending out its serial interface. So we may end up with a default route to a gateway if this is a point-to-point -point interface may impact performance. Warning, that is okay. Granted, yes, we could also just do again a recursive static route and we can just do its IP address, which that's typically what I do. 
but our instruction for this is very clear. We're supposed to be using, at least for this portion, a directly attached static route as opposed to a recursive route. So we've done this network. Now let's do the network for R3. So IP route 172.31.1.128. It's a 526.192. And we're going to be setting this out to serial 1. Again, you'll get the point-to-point -point message. That's fine. So did this work? How can we display the directly connected routes? And how can we do all of the static routes? So I'm going to exit out of here. I'm going to get to my exact mode. Let's do a show IP route. Well, that shows all of them. I want to see just connected routes, so show IP route connected. That will just show my uh, connected routes. I can want to see just my static route, so show IP route static, and I'll show you just my static routes. Show IP route space question mark. Oh. Base question mark. You can uh, be specific. You can do connected, any of the appropriate routing protocol or summaries. Like if I want to see just my summary, I can do that as well. So you have some play with that. So I'm moving on to step two. What's really funny is we don't have an E here. Oh, that's because the instructions are slightly different. This is A, this is B, C, D. This is supposed to be question E. So when viewing the entire routing table, how can you distinguish between a directly attached network and a static one? So. I'm going to show up your route, which we've already discussed before in our lecture, but you're going to use this key up here. C should stand for connected. S will be for static. What is L? L is going to be a local. If we had an S or an O or a D or an N1, would be able to decode them because basically you take this letter and you go up here and you find out how it's learned. So two is done. Let's go down to three. How does a default router know? Uh, how does a default route differ from a regular static route? So we're going to configure a default route on R3, and we're going to look at the static routes displayed. So let's get to R3. Let's get to our configuration mode. So a default route, also known as the gateway of last resort, is the network route used by a router when no other known routes exist. So what we can do is we can configure an IP route, and it will use match any IP address with any subnet and send out that interface. And what that means is R3, when it gets an IP, uh, an IP that it doesn't know, it will send out that interface. Everything will be sent to router two and router two will take care of it. So how does a static route display in the routing table? IP route, and you'll see that it'll have a star. So star or S star, that's our gateway of last resort. So before well, we've done a step three, let's get on to step four. 
So Packet Tracer doesn't currently support uh, configuring fully specified static routes. So for this step, we're just going to talk about it. So what does this mean? So I'm going to get back to my configuration mode. I want to be able to send a specific route. I want to be able to send all traffic destined for R2 from R3 out to a specific IP address. How do we do that? We can do that by IP route, destination network, destination network subnet mask. We're gonna be sending it out that interface. We're gonna add one more thing. Not only are we going to specify the interface, but we're also gonna uh, do the IP address. Currently this feature is not in Packet Tracer, but on a live router, you would be able to do this. We're gonna match this route, we're gonna match this IP address. We'll send it out that interface to that IP address. We will do the same thing for all of the other routes. So one for this network and one for this network. So we've finished step four. You know what, let's go ahead and write them out, even though I know they're not going to work. So if you are doing this on live equipment, 192.252, we're gonna be sending this out again. This is zero one's interface and we're gonna be matching the next IP address or the next hop. Again, in Packet Tracer, you should get an error. This doesn't work in Packet Tracer. I'm gonna do the LAN network on R3. Again, I'm sending it out serial one. And next hop IP address is, again, doesn't work in Packet Tracer, I know that, but those are the routes that would correspond to the remaining networks as outlined by these guys right here. So for this one, the first one, this one is the second one, and this one will be the third one. So how do we verify static routes? We do that with a show IP route, show IP route static, and show IP routes if you have a specific network. So let's go ahead and double check that we did everything. And we should have 100 out of 100. Thank you.